Okay, so my name is Jim Hester. I'm a um, software engineer at RStudio and open source package developer. And today I'm going to be talking about creating R packages and sort of how you go about that. So uh, R packages can be kind of frustrating for some people. Maybe they're pretty experienced at using R, um, but they've never, and they've written sort of like extensive scripts, but have never actually uh, tried to go to the next step and write an actual package. Um, so here's some resources you can, you can look at for, for doing package development. Uh, the first and I think the most important resource is the R Packages book. So this is written by Hadley Wickham and it's available for free online uh, at the website listed there. Um, and there's also a hard copy uh, version if you, if you like uh, real books. Uh, this is a great resource for, it's a really concise and uh, sort of easy to understand um, approachable uh, book for, for anyone looking to do R Packages. It's, it's quite comprehensive. It's sort of been developed over time with his and others' experience writing our packages, so it's a, a, like a really good resource. Uh, second uh, resource I'd like to talk about is writing R extensions. So this is a document compiled by the R core team, and it's actually shipped with the R itself on writing extension packages to R. And it's all, it's sort of I, like an, you can think of it like an encyclopedia for, for writing R packages. Um, and that's both a a good and bad thing. So um, sometimes writing R extensions can be like looking for a book in the restricted section of Harry Potter, where you might find what you're looking for, but you might not. It might you might get a surprise. Um, so uh, it's definitely a, a valuable resource. I use it quite often, but um, it's there's parts of it that are not very approachable. So. I, I really encourage you to, to first, as your first uh, resource, look at R packages. If you can't find something there, look at writing R extensions. Um, another resource is the R OpenSci onboarding documentation. So R OpenSci is a organization dedicated for t towards open resource, or open research rather. And they have a lot of documentation for package authors try looking to submit their packages to our open, open sci that is actually also generally applicable to uh, a broader range of packages. So that's they have really extensive documentation and, and great guidelines on what you should focus on in your packages. And the last thing, um, if you're looking for in-person training on writing our, our packages, um, as part of the R Studio conference in the end of January. This is going to be in San Diego. We're having an extending the Tidyverse training day, two-day training uh, that will have a large uh, package development component. And our studio as a company also does workshops throughout the year in a, a, a bunch of different cities around the U.S. Uh, that have um, in-person training. Yes. So our package components, what, what makes an R package? So this is sort of pulled from the R Packages book. Uh, basically, there's a fairly long list of, of different things here. Um, R package, Packages are basically a, uh, a structured, fi structured files on, on disk. So there's just basically a, a file hierarchy um, structured in a certain way. Um, include, so that includes like the metadata about the package, which is in the description file, your R code, which lives in the R uh, directory tests, uh, living in the test directory, and you can see there's a bunch of them more here that I don't really need to go through. And the reason, so you, you look at this and you're like, uh, how am I supposed to deal with all these different things? Um, so basically, the nice thing is, in order to have a valid R package, the single thing you need is a description file. You can actually have a completely valid and uh, correct R package doing having nothing but a description file. It doesn't even need R code. And in fact, for most packages, you don't really have to worry about any of the things on the bottom half of this slide. You basically only have to worry about three things. The description file, which contains your package metadata, the R code itself, and tests. You don't have to worry about namespaces or, or documentation. All of that's handled uh, in, in your R code. You can have vignettes, but they're not required, and, and that same is true for these other other things. 
So um, that's sort of how our R package is structured. So what are some tools you can use uh, for package development? So tools are really important. You wouldn't be able to fly unless you had a Nimbus 2000. Um, so the two main packages for, that I, I think are the best for, for doing R package development are d number one, dev tools. So this package is a package solely focused on, on making uh, R packages easy for you to write. Um, and the second package is called use this. So this package is basically a bunch of functions that were originally part of the dev tools package and have recently been spun off into their own package. Um, and basically what this package is focused on is allow, make easy helper functions for you to set up different aspects of an R package to make it really easy to create a new package, uh, set up the testing infrastructure to have that package used to Git or, you, or push the package to GitHub uh, to do things like uh, set up Travis continuous integration for your package or set up code coverage. It's all a bunch of helper functions to set up various things that would be tedious. And this is really useful. It makes uh, setting up, a, making a new package really simple uh, and, and, and very easy to do. So now we're going to switch over to the demo portion. It's just so how, how does this actually work in practice? So uh, the script that we're going to be, we're going to start with a script. And uh, just like you would, uh, let's say you've been building up a little script of functions and you want now they've sort of gotten to the point where you think it might be useful to share them with other people. Um, and you want to put them in a package. So our script that we're going to write is basically, a, it consists, uh, here I'll, I'll scroll down, scroll down. So basically this, the script is going to create music. It's going to allow you to call this note function and play a sound. So if I, um, so basically how this works, it takes advantage of the audio package, which which takes a basically a, a vector of of uh, numbers between one and zero, and then produces the, the note from your speakers. Um, so I'm gonna source this. So this basically consists of a bunch of variables, and then some helper functions, and that note function we talked about. I'm gonna source this in the console below, and then we can call our note function. Just in the, this will just do middle C, which I, mean, I can make a little louder. So it works. We we can we can play music, um, and you can also play different different notes. We can play like say B flat. We can do different octaves. So we can do an octave. Oh, why I didn't spell octave right? You left the comma. Ah, commas. Yes, yeah, so we can play lower, higher octaves. Okay, so it, it clearly is doing what we want. So now we have this nice function. We want to turn this into an actual package. Oh, we can even do more complicated things, right? So we can play actual like songs. So we have like NBC now. Okay. Uh, so now we have this. We want to create a package out of it. So we can use use this create package, and and our package name. We're being uncreative here. Package naming is important. It's sometimes the hardest thing <laughs> to actually do is actually name the package. Uh, here I'm being boring, and we're just going to call it note because that's the name of our function. So use this as nice because it prints out exactly what it's doing. So I created the package. It says it's creating uh, the note directory. It's creating our, our, the R uh, directory within that and a bunch of other things. Uh, so this is all things that you don't have to do, you don't have to worry about uh, yourself. So this now create, opens a new uh, RStudio session with our new package. So right now, if we look at our description file, this is the metadata about our package. So we have the name of the package, we have the version, uh, we have what the package does, so we should probably put something in here, we say play music maybe. A description, which I'm not going to do right now in the interest of time. Um, we have who, who created the package, so I, I've created it, so it's my name right now. Uh, the license is under, and a couple other things that we don't need to concern ourselves with at the moment. So this works. Uh, this is a package, but we don't actually have our R code in it yet. So we can open up, 
I'm gonna have to like look down here. Do 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 note R somewhere. Where is it? What folder am I in? Not the right one. Uh, annoying. Okay, hold on. I was not in quite the folder I was expecting. It shouldn't hurt anything. Note.r. Okay, there's our script. Oh, I should mention this the script and all of these slides are in the. Um, I posted the link uh, in the Meetup site and I, I have it at the end of, of the presentation as well. So if you want to follow along with the script on, on your computer, you can. So basically, we want to paste all of the same code into a new file. So just copy that. We're going to make a new R script. I'm going to paste it and save that. And this is going, going into our R directory within our package, and we'll save it as pkg, just to make it easy to differentiate between our old script. So now we actually have a, a working package. And we can test that it's working. We can use build. Uh, so the RStudio ID has a bunch of tool of uh, helpers that call DevTools functions. So this load all uh, menu item will actually call DevTools load all. And what that does is load all of your code into the current R session. So now we can actually call uh, note C, and we can see that all of our code got loaded. The other thing we can do is use build check to check if our package will pass R command check. So R command, so this calls DevTools check, which, which calls uh, R command check. And R command check is what is used on CRAN to verify that your package is properly written. So it has a bunch of, of different things that it checks um, to make sure your package is like a well-formed package. And we can see this actually will fail. So this package failed, and the reason that it failed the, the check is because it has this call to library audio. So it turns out that in an R package, you, you don't um, have used a, it's different than a script because you don't um, Specify your dependencies with with library. You actually um, you actually record dependencies explicitly in the namespace. So to do that, there's another helper function um, in the use this package called use package, which allows you to specify a specific dependency. And that, so in this case, we're going to use the package the audio package and we'll give it a type of depends. So we do this, and then it says it's adding audio to the depends field. And then also has this other message about, are you sure you want to use depends? And this, it's true that import, you usually want to import uh, packages rather than depend on them. But in this case, um, again, for the interest of time, we're just going to depend on the package. So again, we can, we can run check again now that we've changed. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. So, so this is now going to use a, a specially formatted comment uh, called the Roxygen comment uh, to set up a, a namespace import. So I'm going to say import from the audio package the play function. And then we're going to use another DevTools function called uh, document that will run uh, this. So this basically runs DevTools document on your package. And what that does is, is run a uh, package called Roxygen on your uh, R package. And Roxygen handles and is the, handles the making uh, documentation as well as the namespace file for you. So that's why you don't have to deal with either of those two things yourself. You can use these specially formatted comments in your R code. Um, and you can put all of that information with it right directly in your R, your R, R code rather than having to do separate um, files. So I did that, and we can verify that it worked, that it actually wrote something into the namespace by opening the namespace file. You can see at the top here it says it's generated by Roxygen 2. And we're not supposed to edit this by hand because we do everything with the, the comments in, within our, our, our package. And we do have this import from directive there. So now we can run uh, check on our package again. And this will run for a little bit. 
I'm just gonna let it go. It'll eventually finish and say it's okay. But it takes a little bit of time. Um, so I think it's done now. Yeah, so basically at the end here, it shows that we our package now passed. It's a perfectly valid R package. We have no errors, no warnings, no notes. So we'll have a little victory song. My, my daughter really likes Goro Row Ro, You Boat. And she, wanted, she kept wanting me to play it over and over as I was. <laughs> um, OK, so the next thing we want to do in our package, which is really a nice thing, is to, to create a readme for the package. So if we're going to put this package up on GitHub, for instance, we want to have a readme uh, in our package so, we can, so it's easy to, for users to, who are going to our package uh, landing page to see what the package is doing. So you can use the use readme md file, uh, function to do that. This basically creates a markdown file, and which we can edit. We can say is to play music. Then we can create an example. We'll just put our uh, we'll put our row 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 your boat as our example. And then we're like we're done with the README file now. So we have a nice like landing page that explains what our package and gives a, a code example for it. So we can do other things with the use of this. We can we can uh, change the license. So I originally had this package license as GPL3. Let's say I want to change it to an MIT license. We can do that, and it will uh, it'll add the the license files and. To the description and, and put the license, uh, license file in the package, etc. We have it use git. So basically, this is starting uh, initializing a git repo for our package. And then, uh, because our studio has a git, a git integration built in, but it's only active when your project is actually using git, we have to restart our studio. So we can do that. So I'm actually I'm going to say nope and then restart this by hand. Uh, recent projects. Yes. Okay, and this will start up a new R Studio. Now we have the Git integration, and we can actually see. I think it does an initial commit for you. Yeah. So it actually created a repo, did the initial commit for me. We can actually post this package to GitHub directly with use this, so we'll do that as well. So it, it's asking if the title and description are, are what I expect. I'm going to say yes, they are. Whoop, yes, they are. So it's going to create GitHub repository, put, uh, add the remotes to my, my local Git, and push that to GitHub. Uh, then we can also tell it. I want to use Travis on this package. So this, and this actually, oh, it's actually going to work because I think I had uh, I had, post, I had started this before. Um, so we can set up Travis, and we can add this uh, badge to our README. So we can do that while we're here. We'll just put this down here. We'll add the Travis badge. Um, and then we can set up coverage in the same way. So we can have code coverage for our package. Oh, uh, but we can't really have code coverage if we don't have tests. So let's go back here. Uh, use this also as a function for setting up tests called use test. Uh, so this, again, does a bunch of things. It sets up the t using test using the test that package um, and, and makes a new test file and opens that file for you. <coughs> So we can make now make our tests. So our, our, our node function here is actually a little hard to test directly because it basically is, is only being used as this for the side effect of playing the music. But we have all these helper functions. Um, so for instance, one of the helper functions is to calculate the frequency that we want to play the note at. And this function basically takes a note uh, specified as a, a letter and an octave and returns the the frequency of that note. So we can test that pretty easily. Copy. So we'll say we'll test the frequency of A at, at middle C, the middle C octave. 
And that frequency, I know, is supposed to be 440 hertz. The other thing we can test is the, uh, the frequency of an A, an octave, octave lower is going to be half as much. That's 220 hertz. Then we can run these tests using build test. And basically what this does, I think it put it over here. Not build test. Yes, OK. So basically what this does is, is load your package with, with DevTools load all, and then run uh, all of your tests on the, on the new code. So this gives you a really uh, good, good workflow for writing new tests and, 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 and in conjunction with writing your R code. So you can make a change in R code, rerun test, it'll run all your tests on, on, the, on that new change. And you can do all of this within the same R session. So let's say I had uh, a bug in my test. And I, I rerun the tests. Now I see I have a failure in the second test. So there's two dots. Each dot corresponds to one test. So this second one failed. It tells me why it failed. And then I can easily change the test to fix the failure. What is it doing? Okay. Fix the test, rerun the tests. Now I have two dots uh, showing that both my tests passed. So that makes it a, a really easy way to quickly add tests to your package. The other thing that we have to do is add some documentation for this note function. So the RStudio ID has a nice feature called insert Roxygen skeleton that if you, if you run it with, with your cursor within a function, it will automatically put up the uh, skeleton of the specially formatted comments you need to use to run Roxygen. So basically this, what this will do is you can set a title for this function. Um, so basically about what it does. So this function plays musical notes. And then each of these parameters is a argument to the function. So the note parameter is a letter of a musical note. And I'll just give an example of B flat. The length is a note length. We'll say one half for half note. Octave. Uh, this is above and below. Middle C. And we'll say like negative one. And volume, volume between one and ten. And then we also have the return type, which in this case is a, a note object. We say we want to export this function, which means that exported functions are functions that are available to users of your package. So by default, functions defined in package code aren't accessible to users. Um, they're all, only the functions that you explicitly export end up being accessible. Uh, the other thing we need to do, we can do is add an example. So in this case, we'll just do a very simple example note of B flat with one half length, uh, lower <coughs> octave, and three volume, let's say. And we can just verify that this actually works. So that's always good to do because oh, we don't have our. All right, so it, it does work. And it's kind of soft because I had three volume, but if I put this at like eight or nine, then it's louder. Um, so now that works. Now we can run. Um, we can run build document, and this will now update our documentation, and we can see exactly what it did. If we go to our man page, why did that not? Or maybe it just an update. I think I have to like update this. Interesting. Did I not see? Hold on. So it should have. That's really interesting. Why did it not? So typically this would. Uh, oh, I know why. 
I'm editing the wrong file. So you actually have to make sure you edit the correct file. So I was editing my script and not the package. So we can add those Roxygen comments. That's actually a useful thing. Because these are just regular R comments, they're just specially formatted R comments, you can actually have them in the script and run that script and it, the comments won't, won't actually do anything. But in a package, we can document the package, look in our man page, we see we now have uh, it generated the, rocks, the RD file, uh, which is the format used in R help. So we can now use uh, the question mark note and see we get formatted R help for our new documentation. And all exported functions in R packages have to be documented in this way. So this is a really nice workflow um, for, for doing that documentation. So now we basically have a working R package. And we can actually, if you noticed, I put it on GitHub. One of the things I did was post it to GitHub. So if we now go to our note package on, in my GitHub account, you can see this is actually here now from nine minutes ago when I, when I ran that. And we actually can update within our studio, commit all of our files. I don't know if there's an easy way to commit everything. Well, let's do it by hand. So we'll just commit all of our changes, updates. Maybe do your commit be messages better than that. Uh, so now we can push all that, push those changes, and then we get all of our current uh, changes on GitHub. So this gives you a really good way to, to get a uh, package set up very quickly. And apparently my Wi-Fi is slow, but it worked eventually. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything. Oh, I guess the one other thing, I have a little bit more time. Um, the last thing I can talk about is you can actually, it's very easy to set up RCPP uh, in a R package. So RCPP is a, uh, an R package that gives you easy interoperability between R and C++ code. So we can set up RCPP and then just post uh, some simple more of those Roxygen comments and run document then create a new C++ file with a new function. Actually, I didn't delete too much. So we can actually, let's replace one of our helper functions with an RCPP equivalent. So this calc volume function, for instance, basically just takes a number between one and 10 and divides by 10. So this is not, not something you really need C++ for, but it's a simple thing to do. So we can just comment this out. Uh, let's calc volume, change these to integers. And we want x divided by 10. Oh, integers. No. And we can we just put this in our SRC file, which is where compiled code goes. We'll name this PKG as well. Now we can run load all, and this will actually compile our code. So we can see that I had a extra slash in my file, but it actually ran uh, cl the Clang C++ compiler on our code. And it actually reloads the code automatically. So it's, this is really easy. You can make a change in, C, in your C++ code, run DevTools, load all again, get your new change, and we'll just verify that and know it worked. Why did my note not play? Um, hmm. It's very interesting. My notes aren't working anymore. I don't know why. It's unfortunate. Well, we can back that out. Let me just uncomment this. I don't really see why that <coughs> Oh, 
and there's my uh, stop. Okay. I just want to play my last song. This is really unfortunate. Ah, okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know why that wasn't working. Um, so basically, we want to play. So now we can play our last song. Which. All right, continuing our Harry Potter theme. And this snake is saying thanks. <laughs> and so I say thanks. Um, yeah, questions? <laughs>